So the first topic is journal le cover letter writing. And then I'll give an overview of the uh, journal decision-making process. Who are the peer reviewers? Uh, we'll look at decisions that editors make that, necessi that necessitate a response to the reviewers. Um, you know, keep in mind, if, if you have only minor revisions, a lot of the times uh, the journal editors will not send your paper back out for peer review because uh, the reviewers are very, very busy people. We don't want to burden them. Uh, so if you do a great job responding to the peer reviewers, often the editor will uh, can editorially accept your paper. Uh, so it's important to do a great job on responding to the, the peer reviewers' comments. Uh, and uh, you can actually uh, get your paper accepted earlier if you do a fantastic job. Uh, we don't bother the, the peer reviewers. So I'll give you some tips on how to respond to peer reviewer comments, what to do with if you disagree with their changes that they suggest, uh, and then dealing with requests for major changes, and then I'll share some sample responses to peer reviewer comments. So cover letter. Uh, this is becoming more and more important. Uh, uh, due to the sheer volume of manuscripts that are submitted to journals, um, a lot of journals are doing editorial screening, and a common outcome is reject without review. Uh, I call this pre-review uh, because this is done before peer review. And a good cover letter will help you get your manuscript, help convince the editors uh, to send out your manuscript. So, of course, you'll have the cover letter, title page, and then all the components of your manuscript. So abstract keywords, the manuscript itself with the IMRAD format, tables and figures, uh, and then optional. Uh, this is becoming more common now, uh, is like having graphical abstracts and then uh, videos uh, and supplemental materials. Uh, after your paper is published, uh, your paper will often uh, be published online along with a graphical abstract or even a video abstract uh, you know, due to the... Uh, the nature of, of sharing scientific communication now, um, you know, there's uh, been a trend uh, to having a lot more graphics. Uh, so the, the graphical um, accompaniments of your paper are becoming more and more important. So the cover letter should be concise and clear. You should have a captivating title. Uh, and besides the cover letter, the abstract is the most read part of your paper outside of the title. and, and uh, and you should have standalone figures and tables that clearly communicate key results, clear description of the methods, and then appropriate use of language with no typos and grammatical errors. And here's what the cover letter should contain. Uh, you should have title, corresponding author details. Um, it's very important to have a short summary. Uh, so this will include uh, main findings. Uh, also, you should highlight the novelty. You know, what is new about your paper? What is the importance of the paper? Uh, and also, uh, it's good to have a, another like short section, maybe 50, 100 words, uh, of reasons why you're submitting to that journal and, and why the, your, your research uh, should be of interest uh, to the audience for the journal. Uh, so you can use key words that highlight uh, the match between the journal scope uh, and your manuscript. So basically, the reasons why uh, the paper should be of interest to the readership of the journal. Uh, you can also include conflicts of interest if you have any ethical declarations, if you have human or animal subjects. Uh, some journals will actually ask you to suggest or list uh, opposed reviewers. And then every paper uh, that's submitted, uh, there should be some declaration that the manuscript is original, it's unpublished, and not under consideration elsewhere. 